Hi everybody and welcome back to this X-Plane 11 stream. We're on the ground here in Casement Aerodrome Baldonnel and we're gonna fly this death trap and we're gonna see can we land on an oil rig because that doesn't sound difficult at all. We are Irish 274 in the X-Rotors AW139 the Bell Augusta helicopter. I'm a big fan of this one. I do hope you're all keeping well. Many thanks for tuning in. I don't know how well this can go. I imagine disastrous. But sure, look, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. And you have been warned. So, as I said, on the ground here in Casement Aerodrome Baldonnel, uh, the Air Corps operate these aircraft currently. I have a small glitch with. Um, this kind of bar that goes outside of the doors. But apart from that, it's top notch. Great modeling, good sounds, systems aren't bad. And for whatever reason, now I'd be careful saying this, but for whatever reason, it's one of the only choppers I can kind of handle. That remains to be seen. Kenneth Norton is here in the chat. Good evening to you, Kenneth, I hope you're keeping well. You will be required to be on standby for any mishaps we have in this aircraft. With your many years of experience, you might be able to help us out here. That is the plan. As I'm talking, I have Siri going off in the background. Be quiet, Siri. Shh. So, if we bring up our little map here, just off the coast, kind of over Dunleary neck of the woods, we have an oil rig, and it's known as oil rig. So our plan is, we're going to fly out to this, try and land it. If we are successful in our endeavours, we're going to go from the oil rig up to this frigate. And like, that's that's just, you know, quit while you're ahead kind of stuff. But we'll give it a shot as well. DHP Production, Hampus is here this evening. He says, finally, I catch a stream. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining me this evening. So, let's see what's going to happen here. First things first, get our little door closed. We're carrying no passengers, only your good selves here. And there's good reason. <laughs> there's every chance this will end up really, really, really bad. Or we could be lucky and it goes well. So. What do we do to start this machine here? If I can remember, battery on, get our gens on here as well. Anti-collision lights, position light, our pedo height light even, steering and strobes, our lights be on. So we're gonna disconnect our rotor brake, which is this guy just here. If you could let me know how the audio and visuals are working guys, that would be a great help. Don't need our dome, get our overhead lights up here as we set them all up. Uh, jump ahead, so we're going to get our fuel tanks turned on, cross feeds we don't need, our two fuel pumps can come on, and with a bit of luck this machine is going to start. So we're going to go for a turn on engine 1 and engine 2, our NG is rising, introduce some fuel, we have ITT rising on both engines, that's a good sign, bring them into low idle. We can hear our rotors spool up. <laughs> Kenneth says, not me Murph, I struggle with flying egg whisks. That is probably the best description of a chopper. So our engines are slowly but surely coming alive. We'll turn on our reality GTX, GTX, GTN 750. And we'll squawk VFR. Enter that. Our map is loading up here as well. We want to turn on daytime on our map. Engines are running. At least it sounds good. So remember guys, this is when it was dry. So you can see these, um, the footsteps don't seem to be working, but 
let's just ignore that. Let's pretend they're like some sort of flotation device. Turn on our landing lights here as well. Such a cool looking machine here. Okay, so chopper flying. <laughs> so the very finest of controller inputs here. So we have our park and brake. Just make sure that that's turned off. It looks off. And we're just going to add enough collective and lean the chopper forward here so we can start moving on the ground. We're just going to taxi up here a small bit heading out on, I think it's Alpha. And we'll just take our time. As we leave the ramp here of the dawn She's looking well. So ideally here, we're looking for a heading of 080 once we take off here from Baldonnell. We're going to fly up over Dublin, up over Dunleary Bay, over the harbour there, and then out to sea. So from this taxiway, we'll start bringing our collective all the way in. We have a nice climb right here. And we'll go pick up some airspeed as we bolt on towards the direction of Sagart and Rathcool. Landing gear coming in. Touch the tow brakes to stop the wheels from spinning just because. So it's all about the small little adjustments. We want to be careful obviously with our height and with our speed. To get that wonderful sound of the rotors slapping through the air. Okay, so we are on mission. We'll watch our torque settings here. Altitude is just coming up over 1500 feet. Our speed is very alive, 135-ish knots. I'm sure for copyright reasons we can't play kind of, you know, fitting music for this one, but if you can imagine a tenacious scene, one of imminent danger and horror, that shall be the team of today's stream. So just getting the aircraft somewhat trimmed out here. Trim our rotors so we're not doing anything crazy. Add a small bit of yaw here to our right as well just to try and keep us on the straight and narrow. So we don't want to go too hard with our altitude. Certainly somewhere between kind of Two and four thousand feet is just going to be fine. Kenneth Fitzpatrick is here. Good evening to you, Kenneth. Thanks for joining us. He asks, Have you ever flown from Weston Airport to Lime Tree in County Leash? I have flown out of Weston, uh, but I haven't gone down to Lime Tree. I've flown into Burr, all right. Frames are a little bit on the <laughs> misery side for whatever reason. We're getting about 38 to uh, 40 frames here, but that uh, tends to be an issue with Dublin. I wonder is it because I have reflections on? Stand by. Turn off them reflections and we get our frames back because I imagine we're going to need every little bit of frames here to help us with our judgment. We're back up to 45 to 50 frames. <laughs> Kenneth says, Apocalypse Now. Yep, definitely. That'll work. So we're locked in at 2,000 feet-ish. 150 knots-ish. As we're coming up over South Dublin. If you look out the left here, 
down at the River Liffey you'll have Houston Station, the main train terminal. Right next door to that is one of my favourite places on the planet, Guinnesses. And then further up the quays on into the heart of Dublin City. So we're running Ortho Forex, no we're not, we're running V Countries, see, see what I did? V Countries, uh, which is f working out fairly well at this height. And we have X Europe populating all our little buildings down here. So as we leave the vicinity of Dublin City, we're heading out towards the south side, heading on here towards Dunleary. Out this neck of the woods then you have Kalini and Docky. Bono lives in Docky, or he did. So let's see, can we do a bit of auto pilotry? Heading, we're going to set, uh, we were saying about 082 will do us here for the minute. We will turn on our trim and we'll go down to heading mode. And that should keep us on the straight and narrow. We just want to control now our pitch. We're looking well as we come over Dunleary. Alrighty. So we zoom in here on our little map. Our approach is looking decent. So we have some cargo ships in the area. Container traffic heading to and from Dublin port. We have some sort of a fishing vessel down here and um, what would appear to be another container vessel so our altitude is going to be pretty good up here at around 3700 again just very fine movements on the controls be it your rudder your joystick and indeed your throttle or collective we'll do a quick check here on all our temps and pressures so we can see on our fuel tanks we've got roughly half a tank quantity is okay 418 in each tank our hydraulic systems are working okay all our temperatures engine oil and pressure our electrical bus are all working ESS has seem strange power plant everything is running our torque is at 67 we're nicely cruising here not under any pressure Kind of says the sound is class. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. Maybe not that few. It is a great sounding chopper. Now don't get me wrong, I like this and the um, the sounds of the gazelle are quite good. Especially inside it. They're awesome. 
So a quick look at our map here again. We will adjust our course now to 080. So we're expecting to see this oil rig out here some oh there it is look there it is dun dun as I moved the mouse and I lost it and he's the navigator okay so that's our target it looks so small but we'll give it a bash we managed to recover an SR-22 after going into the wet with a parachute. Surely we can land on an oil rig. We can land on an oil rig and don't call me Shirley. That was like way too slow. It took way too long to come up with that one. The brain had to think what it was trying to say. It didn't work out too well. I'm all flustered with trying to land on this thing. Anyway watch our altitude here now we can start reducing our collective and start putting the nose down ever so slightly I think these cranes actually move as well just to give us added holy moliness so let's see what happens here So as we descend here at around 800 feet per minute, our speed is coming down nicely as well. Go ahead, put on our landing light to let them know we're heading their direction. Okay. Can you boys see an oil rig around here? Two thousand nine hundred feet, we're at about one hundred and ten knots. And we do have a little bit of wind to contend with. But so far we're okay. So we want to figure out where these cranes are and where the pad is. So we have eyes on the pad. Okay. So it's at the back. A hush falls over the crowd. He steps up. Okay, so with the oil rig now on the right hand side, keep this rate of descent going. It's not too bad. There's 1900 feet. Okay, we're gonna kick it back into manual mode. My aircraft. And let's see what we can do here. So speed down at 108. Go ahead, lower the landing gear. We're gonna start a right hand turn. Bleed off some of our speed here as well. Get us down to something we can control a little bit better. around the 70 knots or so so 
So here's our visual. Twelve hundred feet, fifty six knots. Start turning in towards it. Colin Prendergast is here. You're very welcome, Colin. He says, fair play to you for going rotary. It remains to be seen, Colin. This has all the ingredients and a recipe to be a disaster. Now, we want to correct our fall rate here. As in, a whole load of torque deployed to keep us from dropping out of the sky. Try and get ourselves normalised here if we can. So a thousand feet, twenty odd knots. We shall try slowly and surely lowering this machine down there. There is wind. There's them cranes moving, just to make life really awkward. <laughs> this is much harder than it looks. Or maybe it looks really difficult as well, I don't, know. don't really know. Concentrate on this, Marv. Okay, if guys you got like a big rope or a ladder or something, I'm cool just hanging around here. There's wind there, you can feel it, it's like... As soon as you get the chopper positioned, parts of it just want to move. Don't hit the crane. Parts of it just want to move. LVP. LVP. Easy does it. Easy, easy. We'll just kind of up our chair here a little bit. Steady. Steady. Whisht. Come on. This would be epic if we pull this one off. It's like trying to pick up a fried egg with a knife. Easy, easy, easy. No, 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 no. Nearly. Mind the crane. Laminar oil. Do you know what's upsetting me? It's the um. We can't see now. It's the fact that the crane is moving. Okay, here's a problem. Wasn't expecting this. <laughs> ah, she's gone nuts. Can one recover from this mess? Nope. Engine kaput crashed. I wonder what happened there. Let us go to replay and we go back and see what caused our utter misfortune.
it's as if an engine shut down, isn't it? Kenneth rightfully says, Helicopters never needed ejection seats because the difference in flying and crashing is not black or white. It's always been kind of a grey area. I agree. We came super close here. Ooh. Yeah, we deserve to come off it there. Rip. I wonder was it because of the wind or just my sincere lack of being able to fly a chopper. Ah look, the back rotor got clipped. Okay. Well the good news is, we can just do all that again. Thank god it's a sim. Back to Bal. Okay, that was the warm-up lap, guys, right? That's that's what we'll agree. Stormy? No, 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 no. Kadunk. Oh, yeah, we need to exit. Replay mode. Flight configuration. New flight. Take off from Dabal. Please stand. And we go again. So Kenneth says, um, <laughs> I tried the ship first as it's moving, and that was absolutely the crane driver's fault. Okay, let's try this again now. Uh, watch my chair here. Rotor brake off. Let's get some life into this machine. Let's see, can we do it this time? This would be fun if we can. And if we can't, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Fuel tank's on, cross feeds off, the pumps can come on, and jump over here. That's strange, why is it? There we go. Okay. ITT is rising on both engines. Set to low idle. Engines coming online. All engines running. And let's try this again. Okay, are we ready now? I think I'm ready now. Let's give it a shot. Right, no more fancy stuff. We're just about to um, blast off from Baldonnel here. As we do, up away from the ramp. We won't bother with Alpha here. We're just going to get straight out of dodge. We have lift off, landing gear coming in, accelerating sharplish, and let's head straight over for Dunleary. I suppose it doesn't matter how many times we fail at this, we only have to land it once and then like, I don't know, go back and edit the video and say, do you remember that time on our first go we like totally landed that? So what happened to us, the tail rotor hit one of the cables. The simulated horror then followed. So we're absolutely bombing along here now. Alrighty.
Well, speed and altitude looking good. Quick check in our map here. We're heading on out towards this oil rig. Gonna get the aircraft somewhat trimmed. And let's see what happens this time around. So we're going to go heading mode to on. Put our trim to on. We'll go heading mode. Oh, that didn't want to work. Uh, something worked. Force trim on. Should be on heading mode. Which it isn't actually locking it in now. Why is it doing that, lads? PFD in the right. Hmm. Nope. That doesn't seem to be working at all. Who needs the autopilot? <laughs> Helicopter. A million parts rapidly rotating around an oil leak waiting for metal fatigue to set in. Yeah, but they look cool. They really look cool. So back out over Dublin. I imagine this would be a little bit easier um, if we were using track IR. Cockney John is here. Good evening to you, John. Hope you're keeping well. He says, it's looking quality, Murph. You didn't see what happened a while ago, John, did you? If you didn't... Don't worry about it, you missed nothing at all. We've literally just taken off from Baldonnel. We've had no other events for this evening. We've just, we're flying out to an oil rig. Nothing else happened earlier on. We crashed earlier on, John. We hit the oil rig and, and it, the tail rotor hit it and we span uncontrollably out of control. So we're giving it another shot. So hopefully, hopefully, we can land it this time. Some liquid confidence. <sighs> so this oil rig is just off airway Q36, Q37. And it's our mission to land. It 
In the distance, we have Oil Rig Ahoy. Over here. Will it claim its second victim? Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, John, it was bad. Really, really bad. I think I have the correct title on the video. Can I land on an oil rig? It's not a statement, it is a question. So far, no. Three thousand feet ish, one hundred and fourteen knots. We're very close. Um, I definitely think my viewpoint is somewhat limited, so we'll try and do it all over again. That looks pretty out there. Okay, so the secret is, stay away from the cranes. I think our approach was correct, but don't go in sideways, just straight in. So your choice of theme song for this, again, must be full of tension and horror and things could go wrong. Speaking of things going wrong, I could be late with this information, but I've, uh, I read today that they've pushed Top Gun uh, Maverick out to next year. Super bummed over that. This year really is a write-off. Okay, we don't want to be climbing now, we want to be descending. So we'll keep an eye on this oil rig here as we approach it. Kenneth says, what's the news on the air car getting fast jets? Um, at the moment, I don't see it happening. Um, I read in an article that one of the former GOCs of the Air Corps, uh, he's retired now. He had said, you know, Ireland should have fast jets, primarily to intercept and to, you know, patrol Irish airspace, especially with the the lads from Russia having a bit of crack with England every now and again. But uh, I think the problem with the Air Corps at the moment, and, and it has been for a while, is pilots, the availability of pilots. Um, so they can certainly get them in and train them it's very hard to keep them. Now, things are a little bit different now because, well, on the civilian side of things, there's not a whole lot of flying going on. But the PC-9s, like, they're as close to, in terms of equipping someone to be able to fly, they're as close to a jet you're going to get in terms of their capability. 
Like, you know, okay, they're turbo props, but like they're fast. They would have limited capabilities. I think they're more suited to air to ground rolls. Um, but yeah, like it's it's better than nothing, I suppose. The last time the Air Corps operated jets would have been the Fuga Magisters. Uh, and before that they had the Vampires. There was talk over the years, you know, they were you know, they were thinking of replacing them with the um was it the L one was it the L one three nine jet? Or an Alpha jet or even a Hawk. I don't see them getting anything bigger than that. Okay, 97 knots, landing gear coming down, we're quite high, so we'll just take our time here. Can someone, like, call down to the oil rig and tell that crane operator, just, just take five, man, just, like, go for your lunch. We won't tell anyone. Okay, we want to be coming in at that angle there. Let's see what happens. Okay, we try it again. Easy does it. Contact left, no. She was LDP. thinking of it. LDP. Nearly had it. Close, but no cigar. Come on. Contact left, right, and park and brake on. Celebrationary dance.
Forget you guys, I'm gonna applaud myself. Oh yeah! We did it! We landed on an oil rig! It only took us two times and like... Spent a litre and a half of sweat, but we're down. Welcome to Laminar Oil in its Minecraft graphics. But that doesn't matter. We made it. That's an achievement, lads. That hasn't been done before. Well, by me. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think helicopters are manageable without VR. Colin, I absolutely agree with you. That's just, that was hardship. Kenneth says, well done. Thank you very much. Holy sweet lamb of that thing. Now, one should say, look Murphy, quit while you're somewhat ahead. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to go for a moving target. Which is at speed, heading up towards the north. And what sort of speed is it doing? Okay, he's about 30 nautical miles away. we got to catch him. So now we got to get off this. <laughs> we need to get off this oil rig. Uh, okay, let's see what's going to happen here. So where are you at? Why is that doing that? There we go. So you're over there and you're over there. Okay. Right, lads. Oil rig mission complete. We've dropped off our peoples. Bit of back pressure. Push the chopper off. Back us up from this L machine here. Alrighty. Uh, good luck to your oil rig. Okay, so we have a bit of ground to cover here. We need to pick up this frigate, which is to our north. So, we'll pick up our speed here and chase this frigate. I think it's up this direction. Yep. He's a nice bit up, actually. Okay, away we go. So, however difficult the oil rig was, at least it wasn't moving. This crazy thing is moving. Yeah, about 30 nautical miles to the north, so... We'll keep our speed up. We should catch it up here now in a couple of minutes. One thing I'm going to miss, well, from the initial launch of Microsoft Flight Sim, is going to be choppers. Now, I kind of understand why they're not releasing choppers this early on. Um, and I saw a post, I don't know was it on Twitter or what, but um, seemingly there's going to be a Dash 8 DLC coming out. I don't know. I read another post that said that it's going to work with Track IR. Or IR. That's going to be really handy. Because my own, ex well, I can't, the views are a little bit awkward, put it that way. Now, one thing I've noticed with these ships before, they didn't gradually turn left or turn right. They kind of just, you know, <laughs> jask a sea or clay a sea. It was a full hard left or hard right. So let's see how we get on here. Altitude is fine. Keep it up around 4,000. Nothing much higher than that. And we can 
humper speed up to about 150 here. So we're following our little X-plane map. It's going to take us up past Drogheda and it's somewhere between kind of Dundalk and Newry. So that's where we got to go. On our left hand side we have Lambay and then Dublin in behind it. Speed is good. We're starting to close in on the frigate. As they say, practice makes perfect. Such a cool looking chopper. We're about 20 miles out. Should be in visual range fairly soon here.
Now how far is this guy going to keep going north before he changes his course? That is going to be a worry. Have you guys ever done... Well, I know there's carriers, right? So you can... I think we've all tried to, you know, put a Cessna on a carrier, but have you tried choppers on these ships or oil rigs? Just in case you're ever starting to say, yeah, there's not much to do in my sim. I'm telling you, this is super fun. It's, it's challenging, but it's super fun. Maybe that's our guy. Nope. We're under 15 miles away. I think I see him. Yep. There's a something. Sure, what else would you be doing on a Wednesday night only trying to land a chopper on a ship? I have a feeling the weather is going to change or the ship is going to move. It'll be one or the other, waiting to see. I think on some of the choppers, if they're doing um, these landings on ships, you often see them with like a harpoon underneath that'll actually shoot down and grab the ship when they're actually moving at sea. So, if or when Air. this all goes t Air. terribly wrong, we'll blame it on not having Air. a harpoon. Air. As we get an airspeed warning because we're absolutely tanking it. Okay, 10 miles. Getting 60 frames, which is good. We're at 2,500 feet. If we zoom in now, we can start to see the back of the ship. Big Mungus is here. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. If you want to watch back on the video later on when it's on YouTube. Our first attempt we crashed horribly 
it was a big mess. Second time we managed to put it down on an oil rig and now we've gone from the oil rig and we're heading up to this frigate. That's the plan. Big Mungus, that's a fantastic name. <laughs> fantastic. Alrighty, let's see how this all goes. I'll need to figure out what speed the ship is actually travelling at because no matter what we do, we have to match it. And hopefully it doesn't make any, you know, immediate turns. And we've got to be super careful because it's going to be tight. This is a relatively big chopper and the doors of the hangar are going to be quite close to us, so there's not a whole lot of room to manoeuvre here. There'd be the ship. <laughs> the ship is travelling at Mach 2. You see, once we get good at this, we'll start getting cocky. Like, we'll do a barrel roll on the way down to the ship. And then, like, I'll put on a smoking jacket, have a brandy and a cigar, and grow a moustache and a scarf. Like, that's, that's what's going to happen here. Okay, no pressure Murph. You're fine, this will be totally fine. So, start bleeding our speed here. There's a hundred knots. Landing gear coming down. Okay, she's doing about 20 knots. Maximum effort. Keep our speed beneath 50 and try and keep it somewhat level. Landing gear is down, we got our three green lights. So what's our speed here? I reckon 20 knots is the speed of this vessel. 
there's a tiny bit of a space on the on the aft deck. A little bit high. LVP. LVP. We kind of want to get ourselves lined up here. And the good thing is, the wind is actually hitting us dead on the north. Easy. And park and brake. Well, you know, that's just kind of what we do around here. <laughs> what a monkey way to go. Fantastic. Yeah, we're not centre, but who cares? And I literally. Holy crap, I'm moving. Hang on. Easy now. Why are we moving? Cut the fuel. You know, for obvious reasons. Get our door open. I don't know, it could be a bug maybe an X-Plane that just wants to move ever so slightly. Like, we are 100% moving. Which is kind of odd. And there's not much I can do. Easier than the rig. It certainly looked like it kind of, didn't it? But I... Don't really like the way we're moving. Parking brake is on. So it must depend on the ship. The ship suitably called McInerney. Yeah, no, parking brakes are on. Simulate a greasy deck, maybe. Jeez, look how, <laughs> look how close we are to the hangar. Although, it looks worse now because we're rolling forward. That's so strange. And there doesn't seem to be... I can't do much about it. I can try and shove it away with our rotor paddle. No. <laughs> Weird. I wonder is it, yeah, it's probably because the surface of the vessel is moving. And it's probably 
not liking that. Well guys, that was a night of nights. Achievements all over the shop. I have to say that, that does look pretty cool. Get on our reflections. Let's see what this does. Yeah. <laughs> 2007 graphics just look amazing. <laughs> oh well. That's kind of strange. I know just the music. Like, this is our quote, Top Gun, unquote, trailer. Maybe not. Oh crap, we're moving. <laughs> Somewhere in the Irish Sea. I don't know. I like it. Yeah, it just wants to move us. That's enough of that, anyway. Alright. <laughs> what a night for craziness. I don't know what to say. I really don't. But, we have achieved what we have set out to do, which was, after two attempts, land our chopper on an oil rig. Try the gazelle, see if it does on the skids. Well, we can try it. Uh, oh, hang on. Play configuration, just change the gazelle. Will that bring us back to Baldano? Probably. Yeah. We'll try it the next time. <laughs> I need sleep after this one guys, this took it all out of me. Give me GA any day. So as always guys, many thanks for joining me here for tonight. We set out what we wanted to do, land on an oil rig and then we got our bonus points to land here on a frigate. Choppers are an awful lot of fun in X-Plane, I will give it that. And my favourite is still the AW139. So yeah. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, Friday is our next stream. So until then guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.